everyone, welcome to Miss Wetton's Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at how you can identify non-metal oxides and metal oxides when you're given data about a substance's properties. Okay, so let's remind ourselves first what a non-metal oxide or a metal oxide is and how it's formed. So a metal oxide is formed when a metal reacts with oxygen, for example in the air, and that produces a metal oxide such as sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, iron oxide, you could also have beryllium oxide, things like that. Generally metal oxides have some similar properties. They're usually solids rather than liquids or gases. They usually have a low solubility in water, which means they don't dissolve very easily in water, and if you add them to water, they won't completely dissolve. They also, when you do dissolve them in water, tend to produce a solution that has a high pH above 7, so they form an alkaline solution. Nonmetals, on the other hand, form when a nonmetal, such as carbon or sulphur, reacts with oxygen, producing a nonmetal oxide. So you could have carbon dioxide, carbon mon monoxide, for example, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, sulphur dioxide. In general, they have similar properties, which are that they are usually gases. So all the ones listed above there, carbon monoxide as well, they're all gases at room temperature. Instead of having a low solubility, they tend to have a high solubility in water, which means they dissolve really easy, easily in water. So sulfur dioxide can dissolve in water, and that's what causes acid rain. Because they form an acidic solution when they do dissolve in water, so they form a solution with a low pH below 7, and that's why they form things like acid rain when they dissolve in water. So you could get an exam question that looks a bit like this. Samples of a metal and non-metal oxide are added to water, we stir it, and then we measure the pH of the solutions that are produced. We have two oxides. We don't know whether they're metal or non-metal oxides. When we dissolve X in the water, it doesn't dissolve properly. Some of the solid is left, which means it has a low solubility, and it produces a solution with a pH of 10. Whereas Y dissolves completely and no solid remains, it has a really high solubility, and it forms a solution with a pH of 4. We need to decide maybe which one is the metal oxide and which one is the non-metal oxide. Well, to do that, we're going to have to go back to the properties of the metal oxides and decide which one fits those properties best. So we can see that metal oxides have a low solubility, which means they don't, don't dissolve very well, so some of the solid is going to be left, and also they form solutions with a high pH above 7. If we go back to our data, we can see that X has some solid left, so it's not got a very high solubility, it's got quite a low solubility. And also the solution that's formed has a pH of 10, so it's got a high pH, that means that X is probably going to be the metal oxide. And that means that because Y has no solid remaining, it must have a high solubility, and it has a solution is produced where it has a low pH, that means it's going to be a non-metal oxide. So the non-metal oxide will be Y. So there's an example with just two, but you might be given an exam question where you're given a table of data about a few different oxides and you've got to figure out which one's which. So the question might look something like this. Three oxides are added to water, the pH of the solutions is measured, and then they give us this table of data. So it tells us that copper oxide has a low solubility, carbon dioxide has a high solubility, and iron oxide has a very low solubility. Then they'll give you a table of data to show you what happened when they dissolved these three unknown oxides in water. They are those three, but we don't know which one's which. So when they dissolved A in water, some solid was left, low solubility, and it had a pH of 9, the solution that was formed. B, no solid was left, it dissolved completely, and it formed a solution with a pH of 5. And C, some solid was left, so it's not completely insoluble. And the pH was 11. We need to identify which of those three are the three oxides in the bottom corner. So what is A? Is it copper oxide, carbon dioxide or iron oxide? And we do that for all three. Pause the video, use the data in both tables to see if you can figure it out. Okay, so we can see that B produces a solution with a pH of 5. So that's acidic. It also dissolves completely, so it has a high solubility. And both of those things tell us that it's going to be a non-metal oxide. We know non-metal oxides form acidic solutions, and then it tells us in the table that carbon dioxide, which is a non-metal oxide, has a high solubility. So we can see that B is going to be carbon dioxide. 
So we would identify that oxide B is carbon dioxide. Now we've got two left there. They're both going to be the metal oxides because they've got high pHs in the solution that's formed, but we don't know which one's which. Which one's copper oxide, which one's iron oxide? If we look at A, all of the solid is left. That means it's got a very low solubility, and our table tells us that iron oxide has a very low solubility. So that tells us that A is going to be iron oxide, whereas C has got some solid left, but not completely. So it just has a low solubility, not a very low solubility. So that means C is going to be copper oxide. If they've given you a table of data and you haven't used the data in the table, ask yourself why. What was I meant to be doing with that data? They will only give you a table of data if they want you to use it. So make sure if you see a table, think about what you can do with that information. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful for you and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.